money. You put it in the bank, and it's there when you want it. But what if you went to the ATM, and the bank didn't have your cash? It happened in the past. And that's why the Federal Reserve was created, to keep the financial system stable. The Fed provides short-term loans to banks so they have enough money on hand in times of financial stress. But travel back in time to before 1913. No one was responsible for the health of our banking system. There was no lender of last resort. Why? Because from our country's earliest history, some people opposed a central bank. They feared it would put too much power in too few hands. But as the country grew, frequent banking panics kept the economy on a roller coaster ride, complete with ups and downs, chills and spills. The last straw came in 1907. One of Wall Street's largest financial institutions, the Knickerbocker Trust Company, went bankrupt. Panic was widespread. People raced to withdraw their savings, only to find that banks didn't have cash available. Financier J.P. Morgan and a group of investors rescued the economy with emergency loans to banks. But it was clear that relying on wealthy individuals wasn't the right long-term solution for the nation. It was time for a change. The United States needed a strong central bank that would keep money flowing during times of crisis and help prevent bank runs. To keep power from being concentrated in Washington or Wall Street, lawmakers spread control across the country. The Federal Reserve Act of 1913 established 12 independent reserve banks, in addition to a board of governors in Washington. The structure would insulate the Fed from partisan politics and powerful financial interests. Over time, the Fed learned how the supply of money and credit affects financial markets and the economy. By the 1950s, the Fed was working to counter the ups and downs of booms and busts and limit inflation. In the late 70s, a new crisis hit. Bad news on the inflation front. Wholesale prices were up again in February. High unemployment with high inflation challenged America and the Fed. Oil price hikes and poor policy choices made the situation worse. In 1979, Paul Volcker was appointed Fed chairman. Volcker and the Federal Open Market Committee put the brakes on inflation. They reduced the growth of the money supply and raised interest rates. Once inflation was back in check, the economy started growing again and unemployment fell. Breaking news here, stocks all around the world are tanking. More than half a million Americans lost their jobs last month. That is the worst month for job losses. More recently, in 2008, the Fed responded to the largest financial crisis since the Great Depression. Many major financial institutions were on the verge of collapse. Unemployment skyrocketed. The Federal Reserve is more than happy to try the to work with you on specific. The Fed made emergency loans to stabilize the financial system and then purchased bonds to lower interest rates and help stimulate the economy. Though the Fed wasn't able to prevent what has been called the Great Recession, its actions helped keep the situation from being much worse. Beyond financial crises, there will always be unforeseen events and natural disasters. The Fed can do a lot to cushion their economic impact and keep money flowing. So the next time you reach into your wallet or drop by an ATM, take a look at one of the bills and find the words Federal Reserve Note. And remember, the Fed's goal is to help keep the economy healthy.